When measuring physical magnitudes, such as, for example, time, temperature or mass, the result will always have some measurement uncertainties and errors. It's important to be aware of these and what can be done to compensate them in order to achieve as accurate measurement as possible. With regards to measuring pressure, which derives from the base quantity mass, we consider the total error band as specification how accurate a sensor is measuring at different operating temperatures. First, we need to stress that there is no clear bilateral definition about the total error band expression. However, we will explain how Danfoss is working with total error band from a Six Sigma mindset and how, for example, the temperature has a direct impact on the accuracy and precision of the measurement. Manufacturers often use typical values to express total error band or accuracy in the data sheets, but typical values don't tell the whole story. It is therefore very important when you compare total error band data on different products that you know what it corresponds to. At Danfoss, we apply Six Sigma methods in our sensor production to statistically evaluate and control the accuracy and total error band requirements. Sigma is a Greek symbol used for the standard deviation in statistical evaluations and in process optimization. This first illustration shows a standard distribution curve with the corresponding standard deviation given by a specific dataset you are evaluating. The sigma level is given with the amount of standard deviations within the lower and upper tolerance level. The further away from the reference line in multiples of the standard deviation, the higher the percentage of data that will be statistically within the specified limits. CPK stands for Process Capability Index and is an index which indicates how close a process is running to its specification limits. In our production we have decided to use a CPK 1.67 level corresponding to a plus minus 5 sigma approach whenever we make a sample measurement. 5 sigma means that only one ppm is outside the total error band. However, if we evaluate several sample measurements over a longer period we use plus minus 4 sigma as pass-fail criterion. Corresponding to a CPK of 1.33, this relates to a 64 ppm level. In the past, we used an analog method for the calibration and temperature compensation of our pressure transmitters. Here, the accuracy including repeatability, pressure hysteresis and non-linearity was expressed in a relative value at room temperature. It was required to add an additional value due to temperature offset and temperature span error per 10 Kelvin temperature difference. As the analog procedure has physical limitations concerning adjustment capabilities, we are now using a digital compensation method instead, which allows a much wider adjustment range. With the digital method, the offset and full-scale span calibrations are done at different compensation temperature measurement points by using pressure controllers and climate chambers. This way we minimize and compensate the systematic errors such as offset, full-scale error and thermal effects. The digital temperature compensation also allows us to create customized total error bands according to specific application needs. A clear and easily comparable indication in our data sheets with one relative value covering all errors at room temperature and thermal effects is possible. Now that the basics are covered, let's have a look at the overview and definition of total error band and which systematic and random errors have to be considered. To make this easier, we have split the overview into three different groups. To the left, we have errors at reference temperature in the middle, accuracy, and to the right, thermal effects. Each of these groups contains different influence quantities that should be taken into account. Let's dive into the three groups to give a more detailed explanation and definition of these errors and quantities. Looking at the errors at reference temperature, we're talking about the zero offset and span error. Each measuring device is calibrated to a certain range. This measuring range includes a starting point, the so-called zero point, and an end point, which is called the full-scale value. The zero offset describes the error of the output signal 
at the zero point value. For relative pressure measurement, the zero point corresponds to the point without any pressure applied. The span error describes the error of the output signal at the full scale value minus the zero offset error of the measuring range. Moving to the thermal effects, let's look what can influence your measurement and cause deviations. The thermal effects are mainly caused by the temperature dependent physical characteristics of the mechanical and electrical components used to build electronic pressure transmitter. For instance, the electrical resistance of metal increases with the rise of temperature, where the piezoresistive effect of the semiconductors decreases. These changes are not neglectable and need to be compensated to guarantee a reliable measurement at different temperatures. During the compensation process, the output signals are measured while the sensors are exposed to different temperatures in the climate chambers. The thermal effect on offset and span is calculated and mathematically compensated. It's not possible to compensate the thermal hysteresis, but we do have this influence considered in our total error band expression. So the last part is about accuracy, one of the most important characteristics of a sensor. The black line represents the reference value, which describes the ideal characteristic curve. The red curved line is given by the true measured values and describes the actual characteristic. Nonlinearity is the maximum deviation of the actual characteristic from an ideal characteristic. During the calibration process, we measure the actual characteristic and apply corrections by using the best fit straight line method in order to minimize the nonlinearity and errors. The pressure hysteresis is also considered in the total error band. The increasing pressure is shown below, the decreasing pressure above the reference line. In the middle, you can see the hysteresis, which is the deviation between two measuring points taken in an increasing and decreasing pressure cycle at the same pressure value. Repeatability is the measurement precision under a set of repeatability conditions of measurement. This means that we repeat the measurement with the same test setup and procedure. There will always be some deviations in between the obtained values. When it comes down to random errors, it's not possible to do any adjustments based on the input on pressure hysteresis nor the repeatability data. However, the values will tell about the performance of the sensor and are considered in our stated total error band. The Danfoss sensors exhibit a very good pattern here, which documents the reliability of our products. You will often face different expressions for total error band or accuracy. Therefore, it is very important when you compare total error band data on different products that you know what it corresponds to. In this example, we have a total error band for an exhaust gas back pressure application on an industrial diesel engine. In our datasheet, we indicate both the maximum and the typical value. The red line indicates our total error band here at 1.5%, corresponding to five sigma limits, and CPK of 1.67. The blue line shows the typical value that corresponds to three sigma limits and CPK of one. A measurement of the exhaust back pressure of a running engine needs to be more accurate at high temperatures, where the measurement in a cooling application requires an accurate measurement at lower temperatures. Therefore, Danfoss can provide customized total error bands according to the requirements in the application. I hope you have really enjoyed this detailed walkthrough of our approach to total error bands and feel free to contact Danfoss to discuss your application needs. Thank you.